Okay. So, uh, today, we're going to do a Tabata. Um, and it's going to be, uh, it's, it's going to be a bit of a, a bit of like a burn kind of day. Everything's going to burn that we do, so. What better way to do those type of movements than was a Tabata? If you remember, Tabata is 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off for eight rounds, which means one Tabata only takes four minutes. And we'll be doing four of them, so the whole thing is only going to take 16 minutes. Um, really good way to get a whole lot of work done um, and keep the intensity up. So, let's warm up a little bit. <clears throat> I'm going to start out with my favorite shoulder warm up, so grab your stick. Take a nice wide grip. And we're going to just bring this up like a scarecrow, rotate it up, press it up while pulling your shoulder blades together, and then reverse that. It's really humid. Oh, at least where I am. How about you? I just turned off my AC, so it's not that bad. Yeah. I'm kind of tempted to turn mine on, <laughs> even though I'm working out. Oh, I hate the humidity. I get very yeah. oh. Like, when it's humid, it's just uncomfortable to move. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> um, put the stick down for a moment. And we're going to uh, do a, like, a little squat. Ugh. Go ahead and grab your feet. And then you're going to raise your hips while keeping your feet grabbed. Is that a word? Grabbed? It doesn't sound like a word. Hell? Uh, you can stand up. And normally I do this going down the end of the room, but we can just do it in place. All we're going to do is we're going to point one knee forward, open it up, put it down. Then you alternate, open it up, put it down. Oh, give yourself a hug. Up and down. Give a little twist. You're doing a lot of twists today. Lean forward, keep twisting. Lean back, keep twisting. All right, uh, give me a few just normal squats. We're not technically squatting today, but we're kind of squatting today. Okay. <laughs> what we're going to do here is we're going to um, start with our hands by our side. Uh, we, we did this sometime last week, I forget. So basically, we're going to put our hands out in front, we're going to point our thumbs backwards and open up our chest. Hold this for about three seconds and then reverse that. Just keep going. Serve. By pointing your thumbs back, it externally rotates your shoulders and just then opens up your chest by pulling your shoulder blades together. Really simple exercise, but really good, especially if you hunch a lot. And let's be honest, anyone who sits down in a chair probably hunches a lot, myself included. So it's really good to open that up. 
information feels pretty good, I think. Okay. You're going to grab your stick again. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to take a seat. And you're going to uh, cross your legs. <clears throat> Once you're here, you're gonna put this on your back, and you're gonna get your you're gonna get your hands as close as you can while still remaining comfortable. This is hard for some people. Um, from here, what you're going to do is um, <clears throat> so the left hand you're going to turn your body so your left hand goes backwards, and then after you get that little twist your left hand is gonna dip, and you're gonna get this nice little rotation and extension in your back. Don't try and force it, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna get the tilt out, and then rotate, rotate back to neutral. And then you're gonna do the same thing, but try and go just an inch farther, but don't force it. So same direction. So left goes back, tilt, Hold it for a little bit. Undo the tilt and undo the twist. And we're gonna do that one more time. And if you can, go just a little bit farther. Same direction. Ooh, yeah, that's tight. And then undo the tilt and undo the twist. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So my right hand is gonna go back, and I'm gonna tilt in that direction down. And then untilt and turn back. And again, same direction, try and go a little bit farther if you can. And on tilt, and bring it back. And then the last time to this side, try and go a little farther if you can. Again, don't force it. Tilt. On tilt. Ooh. Awesome. And relax. All right. Today's workout <clears throat> is only going to take 16 minutes because, again, each Tabata only lasts four minutes and we're doing four of them. But there's only three movements because there's going to be a repeat. So, our first Tabata, our first four minutes, we're going to do what's called a park swing with the kettlebell. Uh, I suggest since you're inside, get a pillow. Like, I have this, this big, beefy pillow because um, the park swing involves parking the weight on the floor repeatedly and we don't want to scratch your floor or whatever. Um, so I'm going to use a pillow. Then we're going to do Russian twists. Then we're going to do um, something that I forgot the name of, but I named it myself. We're going to just call it a goblet press. And then we're going to do Russian twists again. So we're going to be doing a lot of, <laughs> our abs are going to be a little tired today. Um, so one thing at a time, let's talk about the park swing. So the park swing. The, it kind of, I, I talked about the correct way of picking the kettlebell off the floor for a swing. It's kind of just resetting that every single rep. So what I mean by that is um, when I start, my kettlebell is going to be a foot out in front of me. I'm going to sit my hips back, grab the kettlebell, and then when I start to stand up, it's going to go straight into my back swing. I'm going to pop my hips to bring the kettlebell up, and then it's going to go back into my back swing. And instead of doing another swing, I'm going to park it where it starts. Okay? So it's going to begin and end at the same spot, but it's put out in front. So a park swing is going to look like this. Bring it to the floor. And park it. And park it. Now, the whole point of this is by going 
to the starting position here, it gets me in kind of like a little mini squat, um, and it really gets your quads involved in it. Whereas a normal swing, your quads aren't really doing too much. It's mostly like posterior chain. Um, <clears throat> so this just adds your quads to that equation. It's a lot harder than it looks. So give that a try. Again, you want to watch me first? Swing, back swing, parking. Swing, back swing, parking. Swing, back swing, parking. Looks good from what I can see. Oh, pretty simple, right? Yeah. Doesn't seem so hard right now, I guarantee you. <laughs> These can get pretty nasty. Um, so we're gonna do just the park swing for 20 seconds and then 10 seconds of rest repeatedly for four minutes. Um, and then we're done with the park swing, it doesn't come back. So we're not worrying about anything else until four minutes into the workout and we're done with that. After that, um, we can retire the heavier kettlebell if you got a heavy one. And we're gonna do the Russian twists. And we've done plenty of these lately. So this should not be um, <clears throat> new. You're just going to have your butt on the floor, feet out in front of you, and you're going to twist like so. You can do it with or without weight. Um, I'll probably, ugh, I don't have, a ton of like light kettlebells for this, so I'm probably just gonna use my little baby uh, four kilogram kettlebell. And I'm just gonna do Russian just like that. Uh, a lot of times you would hit the floor. I don't wanna scratch my floor, so I'm just gonna go do this up. Uh, that's nothing new, right? You're all good with that? No, I'll go with that. I'll go with that, yeah, that's what I thought. Um, so we're gonna do that for four minutes, uh, and only that for four minutes. And then we're gonna do the, uh, what I'm calling the goblet press. And it's kind of more like a, a bodybuilding kind of movement. Um, so you may have noticed uh, with some individuals, they might be able to do a million push-ups. they might be able to do a really strong bench press, yada, yada, um, but the muscles, like, in the center, their pecs, in like the center of their chest, don't really develop very well. Um, I'm one of them, and I should be doing more of these if I, if I really cared about the, you know, the aesthetic of it. Um, so this is kind of to help alleviate that. So what we want to do for that is anything that kind of scrunches the chest together, um, like doing box push-ups, where you kind of turn this in, so you get this kind of scrunched position here in the chest, is a good way to do it, or we can do what we're doing today and do a goblet press. So what I mean by that is I'm gonna take this lighter kettlebell. Uh, I'm using a, a, a pood, so 35 pounds. Uh, I'm going to swing it up and grab it in one hand, and then I'm going to let go of the handle and grab it just by the, the ball part of the kettlebell, the globe of the kettlebell. So you can see my hands are close together and I'm gonna try and get my elbows a little closer together too. So now my, my chest is kind of scrunched together like I was just talking about. And from here, I'm just gonna press it up. And because of your hand position, you're not gonna press it all the way. You're gonna have a reduced range of motion press. Very bodybuilder-esque. But you know what? A little bit of bodybuilding can actually help you out a little bit. So all we're gonna do is this reduced range of motion press. For 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off, do that to bottom for um, four minutes. How's that gonna work? Is that gonna be okay? Yeah. Awesome. Now, if that kettlebell is too heavy, you can absolutely do this with the dumbbell. Just, you know, hold the dumbbell as if you're gonna do a goblet squat with it. Any right. questions? Nope, I think you got it. Pretty simple, right? Um, <clears throat> and then the last Tabata is going to be a Russian twist again. Okay? So, first Tabata is the park swing, second Tabata, Russian twist, third Tabata is the um, <laughs> press, <laughs> and the last Tabata is the Russian twist again. And then we're done. 16 minutes and we're done. 
Any questions? I think I got it. Huh? You think you got it? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Oh, yeah, I got it. Yeah, okay. Um, we've barely done anything, and I'm already sweating and uncomfortable. This humidity is awful. <laughs> Uh, so let's get this let's get this done, so we can get out of the humidity and it won't be so awful. Uh, I have a Tabata timer set up on my screen, so we're gonna start in ten seconds, and I'll I'll count I'll call out what we're doing. No way. Four, three, two, one, go. Heart swing. We're just going to be working for the whole 20 seconds. Two, one, rest. First round doesn't seem so bad. <clears throat> Ready in three, two, one. Keep it going, same movement. Two, one, rest, two down. Three, two, one, go. Oh, now it's starting to burn. There it is. Two, one, rest. Three, two, one, go. Three, two, one, rest. Three, two, one, go. Two, one, rest. Three, two, one, go. Three, two, one, rest. Three, two, one, go. Three, two, one, rest. Three, two, one, go. Three, two, one, rest. I think we're cycling now to the uh, Russian twist. Yep. Oh, wait, we've got, we've got 10 seconds. Never mind. Normally, there's not an extra 10 seconds here, but there is in this one. Okay. Go. 
Yeah, I'm using a, I just Google Tabata timer. There's a website called tabatatimer.com. And it's what it sounds like. <laughs> it's a Tabata timer. Two, one, rest. <sighs> So fast as 10 seconds, three, two, one, go. Two, one, rest. It smells wonderful in there. Huh. Three, two, one, go. Three, two, one. Ah. I programmed two of these. <laughs> Two, one, go. Three, two, one. Ah. Oh, boy. Three, two, one, go. Two, one, ah. rest, we got three more. Three, two, go. Three, two, one, Ugh. rest. Two more. Two more and we're halfway done with the workout. Goes by fast, right? Go. Two, one. Ah. One more, three, two, one, go. Three, two, one, rest. All right, going to the goblet presses. Give me a little bit of air. Extra ten seconds. Three, two, one, go. Two, one. This one's going to burn. Three, two, one. Go. Oh, it's already burning. Okay. Rest. Two, 
two, one, go. Squeeze your bum. Three, two, one. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Oh boy. Rest. Oh, that feels good. Three, two, one, go. Speech problem. Reminding myself as much as you. Two, one. Three more to go. And then more Russian twists, and then we're done. Super easy, right? And go. And rest. Two more. Two, one, go. Two, one, uh, rest. We got one more. Two, one, go. Two, one, and done. Ooh, yeah, that burns. Get ready for more Russian twists. Two, one, and rest. We got ten, an extra 10 seconds of rest here. Oh, yeah, that'll get the shoulders, won't it? Two, one, go. Yeah, my shoulders are already feeling it. Wow. Two, one. One down, seven to go, and we're all done. Less than four minutes. Getting there. Three, two, one, go. Three. Two, one. All right, six to go. Three, two, one, go. Two, one, five to go. Three, two, one, go. Three. 
three, two, one. Four to go. Just two minutes. Three, two, one. Go. Two, one, rest. Three to go. Three, two, one, go. One, uh, two to go. Three, two, one, go. Two. One, uh. one to go. Three, two, one, go. Three, two, one and ah, done. Ah. Ah. Ah, that was fun. There's uh I think the uh, the goblet presses are actually the worst. Yeah. Although I definitely felt Definitely felt those park swings by the end of the first Tabata. <sighs> All right, so hip flexors got a lot of work, uh, not only in the park swings, but in just holding your hips up uh, during all the Russian twists. So let's start out with just some good old stand some stretch. So you put your knee down on something, go out into a long lunge with good posture and sit out there. <sighs> Oh. <sighs> <sighs> I'm gonna play with the angle a little bit if you want to, like me, I'm kind of leaning and twisting away from there. Finding a good angle that needs a little bit of a stretch. And to complicate matters a little bit, I'm gonna raise this foot. Grab hold. Try not to fall down, which I might. Uh, ease yourself out of there. And switch the other leg. Again, I'm going to kind of lean away from it a little bit. I am so sweaty. I hate it. Ugh. We'll go ahead look, and grab that too. Oh. 
Uh, I'm use myself out of there. Last thing I'm going to do uh, is take a seat, uh, grab my kettlebell, and just use the kettlebell to smash my quads, or I might actually take the handle, put the kettlebell upside down, and just kind of smash. Uh, the inside of my hip a little bit just because that feels a little tight for me personally so I'm going to spend a little bit more time on there by all means if you feel like one spot needs a little bit of attention give it a little bit of attention Oh, there it is. I found it. I'm just using the weight of the kettlebell and I'm kind of inching it down. Oh, almost like a almost like a rolling pin, I guess that doesn't roll. Just kind of inching it down my leg. Really getting deep in that muscle. There's a nerve around there. I'm just trying to avoid that. <laughs> That'll wake you up real quick. I'm going to go to the other side. I'm going to do the same thing. My left side isn't quite as tight as my right for some reason. So I'm not gonna spend as much time on my left, but a little bit, we'll be good. Sorry, musty outside. Yeah, it's pretty humid in here. Actually really, really refreshing. <laughs> okay. And the last thing I'm going to do with the kettlebell, before we go, I'm just going to put the kettlebell out in front of me like this. And I'm going to put my ankle right on top. And if I want more pressure, I can put my other foot on top of that. I'm just going to move my feet like windshield wipers. Oh, get in there. Oh. And I feel like I'm not doing anything. I'm just going to move this up an inch. As long as I'm on soft tissue and not bone, I'm pretty good. Of course, if the pain is excruciating, just stop. Just kind of doing this as a precautionary measure. My calves very rarely actually bother me. Unless I like do, I guess, <laughs> almost any amount of running. I don't run very often. Although I did run this past uh, Sunday a little bit. Just a little bit, not a lot. Switch to the other one. Running is a great exercise. The problem is people do too much of it with bad form. I took jogging in college. That was a class. Yeah. Here, the, the thing that always bugs me about running, right? Uh, one is, okay, there's a few things that bother me. One is um, people don't realize that they need to learn how to run. And <laughs> uh, I get, all kinds of weird looks when I say that to a lot of people. Like, yeah, people don't know how to run and they look at me like I have five heads. It's like, what do you mean people don't know how to run? You just put one foot inside the other. But no, it's like, if you insist on running mile after mile after mile and you're, and you're heel striking the entire time, yeah, no wonder your knees are gonna <laughs> be broken and achy. Um, <clears throat> and then the other thing is, uh, <clears throat> 
if you're, let me, let me put it this way. If you're lifting heavy weights and something starts hurting, you stop, right? <laughs> That's what everybody does. Everyone's so, everyone is so afraid of weights, right? If you, someone is running and something starts to hurt, what do they do? They keep running. <laughs> they keep running. It'll stop hurting in a little while. What's the problem with that? <laughs> you know, people are so afraid, you know, they won't dare work through the pain in the weight room. But if you put them on a track, then it doesn't matter how much they hurt. They're going to keep running. It's, yeah. it's madness, you know? <laughs> That's my little rant of the day. Random rant. Anyway. Um, this was a good workout. I feel pretty good. Tomorrow's going to be a great workout. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be an imam. It's going to be an every minute on the minute. Um, it'll be enlightening. I promise. Okay. Have fun with that one and have a wonderful, wonderful evening. I'm going to go cool off. Okay. Sounds like a good idea. Oh, yes. <laughs>